What up everyone, Martina here and today we're making a black leather bound grimoire. Just a quick disclaimer to all our subscribers before we get into today's video. I just want to say that I know there has been a lot of bookbinding lately, but we are working on a couple of LED and electronic projects, so don't worry, we haven't stopped doing that. Now let's get into today's project. For this grimoire I'm using thick A3 sized sketchbook paper and I had to start with separating the sheets. In total I ended up using 96 out of the 100 sheets that I had. Then I could move on to folding them in half. I always try to spend a few seconds extra to make sure the corners line up perfectly. When it's folded once I go over the fold again with a bone folder to make sure it's properly flat. I just gotta do that 96 more times. The next step is to make the signatures, which are basically just a little stack of between 4 and 8 pages. I'm using 4 pieces of paper in each signature, which gives me a total of 24 signatures. With all of them stacked together, I popped them in the book press that Hansi recently restored and left them there for a couple of hours. In the evening I could continue with sewing the signatures together, but first I had to prepare the holes along the spine. Previously I've used an awl to punch every hole individually, but now I prefer using a coping saw to make all the holes way more efficiently. I suggest using a clamp to make the signatures stick together while doing this. Also, I don't have a jig to fasten the pages vertically, so I simply held it in place with my knees. I'm sewing the pages to some twine or a jute cord at four points, which will create four ridges along the spine once it's covered with leather. I won't go into detail on the exact sewing method here as I've covered that in a previous video, but I will put a link to that video somewhere here on the screen if you want to check it out. Once I was done stitching, I could release the cord from my makeshift chair jig. At this point I covered the spine with some white PVA glue, which in my case is just regular wood glue, and let it dry. This is to make it a bit more rigid for the next steps. And as many of you noticed in the spellbook I made, there will be a lot of glue from here on out. As this is going to be a dark grimoire, I decided to keep the end pages black. They're made of quite thick cardstock and this is important because thinner cardstock will really warp from the dampness of glue later on when attaching them to the book covers. Now, this stitched together block of paper is called a text block and what I do with it next is hammer it with a rubber mallet to give the spine a nice curve. I'll just flip it over and over and keep hammering it until the shape is round enough. Oh, and by the way, I just want to remind you that, as usual, you can find the links to all the tools and all the materials down in the description. With this book, I wanted to experiment a bit, so I decided to add three satin marker ribbons in two shades of grey. I measured the length that would stick out about 3cm or so at the end of the book, and a few extra centimeters to glue the ribbon to the spine. At the visible end I cut the tail into a V-shape, and to avoid fraying of the ribbon in the future, I quickly pushed it into the flame of a candle so as to melt the edge slightly and seal it off. Alright, time to sew the headbands! I'll use black and purple embroidery thread as they'll match the leather and the amethyst stone on the cover. The way to do this is to first cut two lengths of thread and tie them together with a knot at one end and add two needles at the opposite ends. Then I can punch a hole with one needle through the middle of the first signature and insert the needle into it from the outside. Pull the thread through and insert the needle into the same hole again, the same way to make a loop. Inside this loop I'm placing a piece of leather cord that is a bit longer than the spine and then I'll tighten the loop around it. Next I'm grabbing that purple thread and running it under the leather cord and around the loop I just made twice. 
Now I can begin to wrap the thread around the cord two or more times and keep it in place like this while I bring the black thread in. The first time I'm bringing in the black thread I'll have to loop it twice underneath the leather cord in the same way I just did. Then I can wrap it around the cord twice and keep it in place like so with one finger. Next I'll grab my purple thread again and sew that into the center of the most suiting signature, making sure it overlaps the black thread and locks it in place. Then I'll wrap the thread around the cord twice again and bring the black thread over the purple one. I only sew through the signatures with the purple thread and never through the marker ribbons. When I reach the end, I'll bring both threads to the outside and tie them together in a knot. I'll cut off the excess cord and seal everything off with some glue. Now that everything I need is attached and sewn onto the spine, I can cover everything with a fitting piece of linen cloth that I rub in place with a bone folder. And as you might have expected, there'll be glue underneath and on top of this layer. I'll just leave that for a few hours and grab some cups of coffee while it dries off. When I got back, the glue had dried completely and it was time to attach the cover boards. Usually you'll use thick cardstock for this, but I like my books thick and heavy and rigid, so I prefer to use a type of wooden fiber board instead that's 3mm thick. I'm drilling four holes at an angle into the cover for each of the jute cords. When I've inserted the cords into the holes, I fray them to give them more surface area for the glue and to make them stay more flat. To protect the paper on the inside of the book from the ton of glue I'm about to add, I'm laying a little stack of paper between them to soak any dampness, as well as some parchment paper to avoid making the glue stick to anything else. When closing the book, I make sure to push the cover down towards the spine. On the outside, I'm adding some more glue and parchment paper. And then repeat the whole thing on the other side and finally pop it back into the book press and leave it to dry for a few more hours. As part of the cover design, I wanted to try something I've never done before. I think it's called embossing, when parts of the design are raised to create different levels and more depth. I made a paper template first and figured I could just use the leftover cardboard from the sketchbooks that I had already emptied. I glued two and two shapes together to make them thicker, made sure it was centered on the cover, glued it onto it, and back into the book press it goes. In comparison to last time, I'm using more suitable leather to cover the book today. It's a lot thinner, about 0.3 or 0.5 mm thick black dyed leather, so it should be a lot easier to work with. As it's a whole skin, it's got very uneven edges, so I just chop off the excess on one side before gluing it onto the spine. I'm making sure not to add glue at the very top and bottom of the spine as I'm going to fold it in here later to make the edge a bit nicer. Again, I'm using my book press as a makeshift jig to wrap some cord around the ridges while the glue dries, and this is to make them protrude properly.
when the glue had dried, I trimmed off the excess leather along all the edges and glued the leather to the cover. I used a bone folder to smooth it out and squeeze out any air bubbles, and my goodness, it was satisfying to make those embossed rectangles protrude. At every corner, I cut off more leather so I could fold the edges in and attach them with contact glue. Next I'm attaching these corner protectors. They wrap nicely around the corners and they've got edges that are bent in that will penetrate the wood board covers when hammering them in place with a mallet. To add a nice contrast to the black leather, I decided to make some golden lines on the front, back and spine of the book. I do this by first marking the lines with a pencil. Then I'll paint the lines with something called a leaf primer. That has to sit and dry for at least 20 minutes before applying the leaf metal. I went with gold for this one. The leaf metal then has to dry for 24 hours before covering it with coating varnish. And when brushing off the gold it really went flying everywhere, so if you're planning to do this, prepare for gold glitter all over the place. The centerpiece will consist of an amethyst stone lying on top of a leather belt with a rather peculiar diamond shape. I cut it out first, punched all the holes I needed for double cap rivets and buckles later on, and then stained it with some extra black leather stain. Afterwards, I used my burnishing tool that I just got to burnish the edges with wax. To make this belt blend in a bit better, I added some golden lines on this piece too. For some reason, I lost the footage of me coating the leaf metal with varnish, but it's pretty basic, just a thin brush and paint over the same lines of gold. A couple of places around the covers I wanted to add some double cap rivets, and so I used a hole punch and a drill to make the holes, and then I could hammer them in place. After doing some testing with different types of glue, two component quick epoxy turned out the best at attaching stuff to leather, so I used that to attach the amethyst stone to an oval filigree and to glue the remaining ornaments to the cover. And lastly, all I had to do was to rub the black leather belt with some wax, and this grimoire is complete. probably put this book up for sale so if you're interested I'll leave a link in the pinned comments and in the description. For more
behind the scenes content, make sure to check out our Instagram at the Nerdforge. And I want to thank you all for watching. If you enjoy these types of projects, make sure to click subscribe so that I can see you in the next video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye!